Oh, Ezzy, look at that! You have a candy mustache. Look at Scarlett's mouth. <laughs> Do you guys remember Indy last year where I had to take her to the ER? That was one of the scariest moments of my entire life, and we're gonna kind of recap that a little bit later today. Scarlett, how are you feeling this morning? Are you a little bit better? No, not good. How about, would, do you think doing a gingerbread man would help you feel better? Building a gingerbread man? Um, do you wanna come see what mom and dad got for you? Yeah. Come in the kitchen. Mimi's got it, let's go see. Come in here, I'll show you. <gasps> there it is! The gingerbread man kit. What do you think, Indy? Is this gonna be fun? Oh my gosh. Okay, be careful, we don't, we don't wanna break him in half. Remember, hey girls, girls, remember on Shrek, the gingerbread man? This is him. You get to build him any way that you like, just like on the Shrek. Yeah, those are good ideas that you can follow or you can do whatever you want. Oh my gosh, look at all these little fun things you have. Ah, it's gonna be awesome. Okay, let's get it out. How do you wanna do it? Oh, you want it like this one right here? Oh, you want me to help you? <laughs> okay. Evie and Scarlett got theirs out. There you go. Okay, careful. Remember, we don't want to break him. Set him down careful. What's that? Oh, you got those ones out? Okay, let's put these in a little pile. Okay, these ones we're gonna get, I'm gonna get a little dish for you to put in so they don't go everywhere. All right, Ev. Ev's got her sprinkles. Ooh, those look good. Okay, let's cut those and we'll put those. All right, Andy, what do you think? What kind of gingerbread man are you gonna make? Uh, um, this one. You wanna do that one with, yeah, the, with the little curly hair? Oh, you're, mix, you're mixing yours. Of course you are. Okay, Ez, what kind are you gonna make? I'm going to make it like um, a mommy. Oh, I like it. Yeah, let's do a mommy. Scarly, what do you think? What kind are you gonna make today? What do you think, Scarlett? You thinking hard? Mine. Oh, oh, you're already decorating your bowl. <laughs> well, you're getting excited, huh? <laughs> okay, Ev, what, what is your gingerbread man gonna be like when you're done? What do you think? Um, a girl. A girl? You love girls, huh? Yeah, it's oh. gonna be like Let me um, see. This one. Oh, that one oh, is beautiful. Is All right, so Means has got the icing over here. We are warming it up. So this will allow them to just squirt it right onto their gingerbread men, and then they can start putting their buttons, their eyes, their sprinkles, all the good stuff. All right, so we have Mimi and Papa here today. Uh, they wanted to come hang out with the girls and do a project. As you guys know, Nanny Ash is gone. She's gone all week. She's out at actually Lane and Sam's house watching their kids um, while they're on a cruise. So we're just hanging, having a lot of fun here, trying to, you know, juggle everything but so far it's going great and it's always good when grandparents come over and want to interact and hang with the kids because they're so excited when they come so i'm gonna let mimi finish the gingerbread men product i'm gonna run and get my gym time in really quick and i will be right back ashley is in her office right now let's see what's going on she is with the organizer there she is wave hi <laughs> but I'm actually getting her a whole bunch of lip sets. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so she's supposed to be working on an organizational product here in the, or um, project here in the house today, and instead she's working her business. That's okay though, you can, you can do it all. So that's what I'm talking about, juggling all these balls. We always have so much going on, but it's a, gonna be a fun, exciting day. We have got um, the garage and the basement cold storage that we are working on organizing today, as you guys saw in the other um, vlogs. We got all the shelving done, and so today, now we are putting everything up and getting it organized in there. So all of our Christmas decorations and camping stuff and garage stuff and then food storage downstairs, and there's a ton going on today. So we're trying to get it all wrapped up and juggled. We're grateful that Mimi is here to play and help with the girls. All right, as he's got her icing. Mommy, it's a mommy. Is that its hair? Yeah. Okay, and what color? Are you gonna do sprinkles for the hair? Yeah. Or, oh yeah, that's Daddy. a good idea. Can you help me make You got the eyes on already? Mommy, can you help me? Oh, this? yes, that looks good. Okay, now you gotta do a little bit for the hair. Do a little bit for the hair. Scarlett's getting the eyes ready. It's good. What's Ev doing? Oh, Ev's getting her mouth so and her eyes. What do you think, Ev? Are you excited? <laughs> Scarlett, you're concentrating very, very well. Look at this girl, she is all business today. What's his name gonna be? Scarlett. Scarlett. If you ever ask 
is Scarlet. Any names of her dolls, her toys, anything, it's always Scarlet. Oh, Ezzy, look at that! Okay, let's put some sprinkles on. Okay, let's yeah. put some sprinkles on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just put them right on the thing, and then then you can put your tip your gingerbread man right back over the bowl, and the extra will go back in the bowl. Or you can just eat them. That's what I like to do. <laughs> Let me see that face. You have a candy mustache. Look at Scarlett's mouth. <laughs> I want to see. I can't see. I can't see. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure Tyson already told you, but we've got Mimi and Papa here helping this week. Nanny Ash is in Colorado, actually babysitting Sammy Cakes kids. She stole my Danny. Sammy? Yeah. It's not okay. <laughs> Anyways, it's fine. Mimi and Papa have been here hanging out, and the girls are doing gingerbreads, which is so fun. Uh, last night was a rough night. Scarlet, croup. If you guys have been following my Insta stories, you know about the croup scare in our house. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about croup today a little later on and we're going to talk about it because I think people need to be more educated on it because it really can be super duper scary. If you guys remember Indy last year where I had to take her to the ER, um, that was one of the scariest moments of my entire life and we're going to kind of recap that a little bit later today so that you guys, I was telling Tyson, I was like, I don't think that we ever actually like talked about it once everything settled and calmed and we like we're able to process everything. I don't think we ever actually talked about it. So I think we're gonna go over all of that, talk about all of it, and kind of educate people on croup and how scary it is because I think it's important that people know so that if it ever happens to some of your kids, you guys will know how to react and know what to do. I like making gingerbread man, and I can make it work. Oh, you can make it work. She's buttoning it. I see you're Scarlet. What do you think about him? Um, Pretty cute? Yep. Was it fun? Oh, and what do you think about yours, Ab? Let's see yours. Um, yes. bit on this bit, um, this bit. Can you hold it up so I can see it? So I, I just put this up too. I just put the buttons right here, but it's a butt flap. It's a mommy butt flap. And the dad is like him like this with buttons on. That's so cute. Let's see yours, Cindy. Oh. And the frosting. You love the frosting? Mm -hmm. Let's see, tell me about yours, Cindy. Um, I made it like this. So it, uh, it's head and cheeks and eyes and... And buttons. Buttons. And legs, legs, arms. And it's so pretty, and Andy picked out her own bow today. Let's see, are you done? It's yeah. so cute. Oh, did we eat them all last night? Oh, take a bite. Yeah, there's all the last one, but Scully eat the green one. That was the last one. Vacuum and Indy's vacuuming up all of all of these. Oh <laughs> Indy, you're such a good helper. Good job. All right, 
you guys. So we wanted to talk a little bit about the seriousness of croup because I feel like um, a lot of people don't really even know what it is. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, croup? Oh, they got a cold? They got a cough? What? It is so crazy. So first off, Google croup cough because you're going to want to know what that sounds like. Um, croup is, can seriously be so serious, especially if Strider develops afterwards. Which is what Indy had. A year ago, yeah. yeah. So we want to talk a little bit about, I just like, was thinking about it when Scarlett got croup last night. I was like, I don't know if we ever like actually talked about those events without having like the high emotions. Like we never went through and like recapped mm -hmm. it once like our emotions kind of settled and we kind of knew what was going on. So here's the thing, let's back up a little bit. So Indy was totally fine. Like that's one thing that you guys need to know about croup a little bit is that Indy was 100% fine. Running around. No fever, no snotty nose, no, no whininess, nothing. Like 100% perfect, totally normal kid. Laughing, kind of playing with the girls. Hyper. Awesome. She was like totally fine that night. Yeah. And we put her to bed just like any other night that went we right do. Went right to sleep. Went right to sleep and she was fine. Easy peasy. She, yeah. There was zero, zero signs of even a cold or a cough or anything, so nothing. And that's something I think people need to understand is that like croup and Strider can come out of nowhere, which was terrifying to me because... You just have to be really alert like during croup season, RSV season. Like, yeah. The cold and winter season is just, I mean, especially we kind of learned with the girls being preemies and being NICU babies that... You know, where their organs and, and their immune system weren't fully developed, you know, we were really cautious even from the beginning. But e even if they're not, you know, preemie babies, it can still come on and, and grab you and you just have to be really, really careful. So that night, um, <coughs> we put Indy to bed and she was totally fine. And then um, Evie kept coming into our room, which was unusual. Yeah. It was totally unusual for Evie. She sleeps through the night. Like, once you put Evie to bed, she's, like, done. She's out for the night. She's a good sleeper. And so she kept coming in, and I was like, what's going on? Is she getting sick? What's going on? Later, we realized that that was just, like... Luck. Yeah, divine They're intervention. keeping us up because usually, I mean, by the time all this happened with Indy... We were normally asleep. Yeah, it was, it was so late at night that, that we were usually out by that time. But Evie kept us up. I was doing some laundry... Um, we, I think we had watched a TV show in our room and finally we were like, all right, let's go to bed. Let's go to bed. So we turn everything off and normally we sleep with, we used to sleep with a fan on and so we wouldn't have heard her at all. And Evie kept coming in, which was keeping us up later. It's about 1 a.m. and Tyson goes in to brush his teeth and he comes out and goes, what's that noise? And I was like, what is that noise? We, it was a very, very faint, quiet noise. And so he goes into Indy's room and then he screams out my name and I run in there and she is laying in her bed with her eyes wide open. I will never forget this. It was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. And she was like, <sighs> like gasping for breath. So that's what Strider is. So I lifted up her shirt to look at her chest and her chest was contracting in like almost to the back of her rib cage every time she was trying to breathe in. So my first thought is when there's croup, you need cold air because cold air shrinks the vocal cords. So what croup is, is your vocal cords swell. And so I was like, okay, she needs to go outside. So I scooped her up and she was like, like totally lethargic. Like she couldn't even lift her arms. And so I was like holding her head. I ran down the stairs and I opened the front door and we were out there and the front porch light was on. So this is the first time I'd really seen her in like good lighting. And I looked down at her and she's turning blue. And I like was screaming for Tyson upstairs. He comes running down and I, at first, I'm not even gonna lie, like the thought of calling an ambulance, calling 911 didn't even cross my mind. And now I know why later, um, because I really, really do well, feel- Well, get to that point. Yeah, no I way. feel like we were guided by the Holy Ghost this whole time. I really do. Anyways, I run and I'm like, we have to take her to the hospital right now. So we jump in the car. Tyson's calling his brother. They only live like five minutes from us. And he's calling his brother. He's like, get over here right now to sit with the other girls. And we go flying to the hospital. Definitely over the speed limit. Um, and we passed Garrison, his brother, on the way here. And Garrison saw us flying. He's like, you guys were going so fast. And a cop was going right by. <laughs> they didn't even stop. Like, it was almost like we had, like, guardian angels protecting our car. And, like, get emotional when I talk about it because, I mean, we were going well over the speed limit trying we were to going, get We were going there. 80 uh, in a 25. Now, luckily, it was 1 in the morning and there was, it like, was no traffic. It was 1 a.m. There was no one there. But I was literally flying down a back road trying to get to the hospital as fast as I could. And 
The cop didn't even blink. Didn't knew, even blink an eye. I knew it was a cop coming towards me too because nobody's on the road at that time. And I was like, that's a cop. We're, we're so... And I and I even told Tyson, I, said, I don't even care. You just go to the oh, hospital. I wasn't stopping. And we will deal with it when we no, get I there. No, I wasn't stopping because I could hear Indy. And Ashley was holding her in the back seat. And this I could whole hear time her, and I she's going... <laughs> terrified i was like she like, couldn't get air and so i mean it, i mean it was probably one of the scariest so scary. moments of our entire life we get to the hospital and i fly in there and they pull her back into this room and um honestly the 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 doctor there was like in shock he he later told us he had never seen croup or strider this bad before mm -hmm. and it was so so scary and he, he said her levels were were so I can't remember if it's high or low. Whatever one is, but they bad. were so extreme that, like he said, if you could imagine, like trying to breathe through a coffee straw, that was pinched. He it goes, was pinched. Plug your nose, put a coffee straw in your mouth, and pinch it, and then try and breathe. Yeah. That's how she was trying to get air in, and he was just standing there. And the nurses, oh my gosh, the medical staff They're are awesome. they are angels on earth, you guys. They are amazing. They knew exactly what to do. And without them, honestly, our Indy would not be here with us anymore. No, and again. they were like screaming for epinephrine and they were they were putting the breathing treatments on her. So they don't give them shots or anything like that because the crying and upset swells the vocal cords more. So they want to keep them calm. So they want mom to hold her. They put the breathing treatments on and they took two doses of the epinephrine uh, breathing treatment to even get her to start breathing her levels, again. Yeah. After the second one, they started going back up. Yeah. Um, and, and they were monitoring her so close. There was uh, probably two nurses in there. Three, I think. I think there was two. There was a doctor that was on call. And then he was on phone with um, Provo, which is a bigger hospital. Yeah, um, we that's went where to, the girls yeah, were Yeah, we born. went to the one that was closest to our house, obviously. And then he was calling down to the big one, like, um, like what do we talking do? to a, yeah. um, who was on call down there. And, and he, once things like started calming down and she was just laying, and I will never forget her eyes that night from the second I scooped her up in bed. Her eyes were so, oh my gosh, she had so much I want to talk about. Her eyes were so big and it was like she was screaming, like, help me, mama. Like, I can't breathe. And... She was just staring into my soul and just, like, just breathing. And I was, like, my heart was breaking for her. And I was just holding her and trying to calm her down. And she, um, you know, she definitely started calming down. And once her levels were kind of leveled out, the doctor was like, I have never seen a croup or strider case that bad before. And he said, had you been here two minutes later, there would have been nothing I could have done. Her airway would have shut off and we would have lost her. So basically he said, you made the right decision not calling an ambulance. Yeah, we asked, I said. Because they would, the time for them to get here and then take her back, it was. It would have been too long. And he, he had told me, and I even said that because it never even crossed my mind. Didn't, honestly didn't cross my mind. It was just like these instant, like, do this. It was like, I was reacting where most people I think would have been paralyzed from the fear. I was just doing and shouting out orders and we were just going and just. Everything was just happening without us even thinking. And when I got there, I started feeling this major guilt. And I was like, oh my gosh, I should have called an ambulance. Like, what was I, like, what was I thinking? And I looked at him and he said, no, you made the right choice. He said, had you called an ambulance, she would not be here because it would have taken too long for them to get here mm -hmm. and too long for them to get her back. Yeah. Her levels when, when she came in, like it, they were ridiculous. So, I mean, I think, even, like she said, even the doctor was in shock and I think some of the nurses kind of had to like nudge them. They did. Like, okay, he was hey. just standing you in know, the corner and they were like, like, we need every, <laughs> we need every, every. He's like, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> like he had never seen it. It was so like scary, that. but man, Indy is such, again, Indy, the fighter, the little fighter, you know, she was our smallest when she came out. She was the plug during the whole pregnancy. She was the longest to stay in the NICU. You know, she had that um, bacteria in the NICU that gave us a scare. Um, and, you know, man, that girl, she is, you know, the, the saying, you know, she may be small, but... You know, she's mighty. <laughs> she's mighty. She's fierce. She's a badass. That's what I say. But... <laughs> Boy, oh boy, we're so grateful for... She's... Um, yeah, she's so strong. We're so grateful for the medical staff. The, the medical staff. And for the inspiration God, that we both got. The Holy Ghost. Just mama instincts, dad instincts, and, you know, Indy. Just being a fighter and just being, you know, from the beginning of time, I'm, I mean, I'm she, not giving up. She had... She was so lethargic when I ripped her out of that bed 
there was no way she could have walked into our room to even tell us had we been asleep that oh, she night. Was, she was immobile when I went in there. We would not have been able when to. When I went in there, she her. was completely just, she was like a, a bag of jello. She couldn't even move. She, she was like. And she was blue. She could barely breathe. I mean, when I saw that, it was, I mean, that's why I started screaming for Ashley. It was, it was just, it was terrifying. But, you know, I mean. We don't, we don't want to, we don't, we're not putting this story on our vlog to scare anybody. We're not putting no. this out there to, oh, geez, you know, we're great parents and we did the right thing. And no, it's not about that. It's about informing other people of, you know, we're going into the cold season. We're going into the flu season. We're going into RSV and croup and all that fun stuff. And, you know, as parents of multiples and um, NICU babies, pre preemie babies, we've always been really hyper alert of those things. But... So many cases of these talking with the doctors happen each year, and they're not preemies. They're not NICU babies. And so it's so good to be educated so educate. on the signs, what to look for, yeah. what to listen for, and what to do when you hear those things so, so you can get ahead of it. What I want to talk to you guys a little bit about really quick is kind of the signs of it and kind of the like the stereotypical symptoms. Now, there's this is not like 100% exact science. I mean, obviously, croup can come on during the day, but it is known for coming on between like... 1 a.m. and like 4 a.m. in the morning, um, that's when it gets worse. And it's usually because your kids are like, they're going, going, going throughout, throughout the day and then they lay down and their adrenaline slows down and body their body relaxes down. and then everything just catches yeah. up with them. And so it is usually in the middle of the night. That does not mean that it's only in the middle of the night, but it's usually in the middle of the night. Usually it's gonna start off with a little bit of a cold. Um, Indies did not. So that's why I like to say usually because Maybe Indies did Scarlet. not. And Scarlett's didn't either. Yeah, Scarlett. She was fine. I picked her up fine. from school, and I and I and her. She had a croup cough at school. That but was she didn't have it, it so. before she left. For so school. she didn't have it the night before, and she didn't have it in the morning when we were getting ready. And so she went to school fine and dandy. And didn't when I picked her up, wrong. I mean, she just looked at me and and wrapped her arms around me and started crying. I was like, "What's wrong?" And then she coughed, and I was like, "Oh gosh, she's You're got like, croup." No, she's got croup. So um, so it comes on during the middle of the night. It usually starts out with a cold, um, and it's usually in smaller kids. So actually, croup is a symptom. So it's not like an illness. It's something that comes along with like a cold or flu, influenza, that kind of stuff. Um, it comes along with that. And so um, it turns in, croup is like the type of cough that they get. Yeah. So like I said, Google croup cough and listen to that because that's what you're gonna want to listen for mm -hmm. with your kids is that cough. Um, and they can give you a steroid, um, just a pill that they can swallow. And it seriously within four hours can totally just neutralize that croup cough and those vocal cords won't swell. And so it's really important. Like with Scarlett, I knew exactly what's happening. My kids have gotten croup from the beginning. And Every so I year. knew it was happening. I called the doctor. I said, this is what's going on. And he assessed the situation and he made sure that we got some medicine. Tyson went to the pharmacy. We gave it to her before bed and it takes about four hours for that first dose to kick in. And so I was just waiting for that first dose. And last night I got a scare again with Scarlett. I, and I think it's a little bit, cause I'm a little bit hypersensitive about what happened to India a year ago. Definitely hover parents. Like mm. we don't let them out of our sight. If they have croup, they <laughs> sleep with us. They yeah. sleep in the middle of us. We listen to them constantly. Um, and you know, I, it was that four hour mark that her breathing started getting normal again, but she fell asleep. And within 10 minutes of falling asleep, she woke back up, came into my room and her croup cough was so bad. She was starting to not be able to breathe. And I took her straight outside and we sat on the porch swing for about 20 minutes. I had her completely bundled up in blankets and so that she's not getting more sick, but she has, you have to breathe that cold yeah, you air You want to keep in. them warm. You just want them breathing in the cold Yeah, air. it's the cold the air cold that air you helps. want breathing in. So if you but. live somewhere where it's warm, you usually don't get croup but sometimes you do stick your kid's head in the freezer like you can just sit there within the freezer and make sure that they have that cold air going into their lungs because that's going to shrink those vocal cords and make it so that they can breathe so they will grow out of this and it's kind of, I talked to the dog, he's like, that's kind of a trick question, asking when. It's going to be different for every single kid. But basically what it is, is an adult can have croup, but it's going to manifest as more of like laryngitis or um, just a really bad cough, that kind of stuff. It's because our airways are so much bigger that if our vocal cords swell, it's not going to shut off our airways. And so it's really just when your child grows big enough that they grow out of it. And it's really just that their airway is going to be big enough to handle their vocal cords swelling. So 
Um, technically as adults you get croup you just don't call it that and you don't know that's what it is because you just don't have the same symptoms and so that's something to remember as well it's highly contagious so if you have other kids they're for sure gonna get it so we're get, we're up for a good week right <laughs> we try and <laughs> keep them drinking and eating on their own plates but it's hard it is it's hard, hard with when you know how it is when you have kids and they all just do their own thing but it was harder when they were younger. But. Yeah, but again, it manifests differently. Our kids have different symptoms. Some of them don't get it as severe, and they just, they're fine. Yeah. You know, they might get a little cough or something, but they're fine, and they, they blast through it. So it's weird like that. But, you know, the, the and you don't know. That's the thing. You don't know. You don't, you don't know who's going to get it, when they're going to get it, how they're going to get it. All you can do is be prepared. And so I would just say my advice, you know, and the reason we bring this up going into the season is, it's something that we deal with every year. We've we've been educated. We know what, what to look what, for. What to look for. We know what to do. And, and so if I, there are the symptoms there, yeah. we can catch it before mm -hmm. it gets really bad in the middle of the night. But again, Ashley and I are not experts or professionals. We just we know our kids. We know our plan. We know our doctor. The doctor knows us. We know what we need to do. And I think what we wanted to do here is just make sure you're educated because yeah. it can be very scary. And so the best thing for you to do. Talk to your doctor, know your kids, know your patients, know their... And their... if it's in the middle of the night and you feel like they have croup, take them to the ER. Like, don't wait. Like, they need a breathing treatment. Like, it's not something that's going to get better. Don't let them go back to sleep. Like, you need to take them to make sure that they're taken care of. So, for sure do that. Um, and, you know, we really do feel like we were guided and led the night that that happened to Indy. There's a reason why she's still here because she... It was bad enough that she really shouldn't have been. And so, um, you know, we really do feel like we made all of the right calls, all the right decisions. And we've had several doctors from that night, um, you know, after she had to go from an ambulance to the, from the hospital we were at to Provo Hospital, we had to stay in the PICU overnight just because they were so scared with it. They did not want her to go home and they wanted to make sure that they ha she had everything she needed. And, and they said, they reassured me several times, you made the right call on everything that you did. Like, and I know that that wasn't me and that wasn't Tyson. Yeah, I was just going to say, we weren't calling. That wasn't we me. Were I w we were just acting. We were just we being, were being guided. parents and, um, and listening to our guts and listening to, um, honestly, the Holy Spirit, I feel like guided us every step of the way. Every step of the way that night. And so I would, I would do every single decision I made over again if that's what I felt like I needed to do because I feel like it was exactly what needed to happen to make sure that she was still here. So, so that's uh, that's our that's our croup story. You know, we've got a few of them. Indies was the worst, but you know, again, we just wanna make sure that you guys are educated, especially with the little ones and, and those who have new babies and babies being born during this season. Ours were born in December and we had to be very aware and educated on RSV and all that stuff. They didn't even let kids into the NICU um, in our section for like, there's like a, five month span where they lock it down you're not even allowed up there so for that reason it's so serious so just be aware be educated talk to your doctor wash you know. your hands a lot yeah wash your, your hands, kids a, lot wash their hands a lot germs are real and they do cause um problems <laughs> that nobody wants to deal with but yeah we, that's another thing we've been trying to teach our kids you know after church wash your hands after school wash your hands We've been to the grocery store and you want to push the cart, you know, you're out in public. The guys, there's germs are everywhere. And if you come to our house, you know the first thing I tell you to do is take off your shoes. So <laughs> we won't get into all my my tendencies, but anyways. You guys, she was so brave that night. I was so proud brave, of her. Brave, brave indeed. She's so brave. She's and a tough, I mean, tough I kept, I asked her that night, were you scared? And she's like, no. <laughs> like, I knew mama had me. It's okay. <laughs> Andy doesn't get scared. She's a trooper. But you guys, so she was so sweet. And, you know, we are just staying on top of it yeah. with all the rest of our kids. And we just lay awake at night when they have croup. And we just listen for every single sound and noise that they make. And that's the best that you can do as parents. Parents. So. That's what parents do. You guys know it and we know it. So. Anyways, we just felt like we really, really needed to educate people on our platform about this kind of illness um it's very serious it can be very serious and so we wanted to make sure that we had put that information out there for you guys um so that's kind of what today's vlog is all about so um i just really felt like with scarlet coming down with it last night and with it being the one year anniversary of indy being in the hospital for this I was like, you know what, we should really go back and talk about that because I think it's really important. I had a lot of moms message me from the little information that I put out say, you know what, my kid got um, croup and I knew exactly how to react because of what you had posted online. Like I knew exactly what to do, so thank you. And so I just wanna make sure I put it out there again so that you know maybe we can help somebody, maybe we can save some little kid or 
you know, that's our goal. So thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video. We are going to go deal with our sick babies and love on them and snuggle them and make sure that they are safe and sound and, um, and tell them not to breathe or cough in our face. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get sick. We can't get sick. Guys. They're just going to take care of us. <laughs> All right. We will see you guys. Tomorrow. Guys, we love, love you. Y all. Thanks for the support. Bye.